الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله والصلاه والسلام على خير خلق ونور عرش افضل الانبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وسيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا ومولانا ابي القاسم محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين I begin in Allah's name the beneficent the merciful all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us this existence and giving us the ability to recognize his presence and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to choose wrong from right for he considers us his representatives on earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this fantastic month the month of Ramadan Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an a blessed month a month of guidance a month of baraka a month of rahma really no muslim in the world would dare challenge this state these statements because they are truly a blessing upon us they change us in so many ways they ref- they cause us to reflect in so many ways And in this lesson month, as you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Holy Qur'an. In fact, we have rewired to show that all revelations were revealed in this lesson month. Even the preceding revelations came in this lesson month of Ramadan, specifically the night of Laylat al-Qadr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us this autonomy to choose, and therefore He has prescribed fasting upon us. يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون where fasting has been prescribed upon us just like what was prescribed to the predecessors our forefathers because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is laying the foundation very clearly upon us that our obligation in this world is to go through a trial uh, this world is very transient it's very short lived it's very temporary and our pursuits are really very short lived i don't care what anyone tells me uh, this is an experience and we all know it that we get duped many times thinking that that which we possess is going to last forever when in fact only to slip away from our fingers when we think we've got it and allah has made us as human beings that are full of trepidations like al khalaqna al insana fi kabad insan is in a state of trepidation we're never satisfied and even if we are we always know what looms around the corner is death danger disaster change i mean just this morning i was thinking about our brothers and sisters in syria for example in say the zainab for example as you know these armies are coming around i remember i was in homs a few years ago and you know see people going you know with their daily routine you know things that everybody does and you know people sitting in the restaurant to eat and children going to school and you're thinking for a moment says you know it's not happening right now people are in fear people are in uh, in a state of quandary they're in tremendous uncertainty uh, many have lost their loved ones that yesterday they were planning maybe to have a birthday party or to go to a wedding and today it has all changed because they're no longer here just because some vicious uh, perpetrator of trouble in this world has decided that we're going to shake up the happiness of people this is the world we live in it's a world full of uh, transient uh, systems where we think we've got something but within a short time it begins to vanish or even if we have it for a long period of time its sustenance its maintenance is a task in itself so the transient nature of life allah has created this scenario uh the, even the term kabad as we know is the similitude of liver the organ in the body which is the one that is most stressed at all times you know the liver is the only organ in the body that is the most stressed and life is nothing but full of stresses but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lines it in a very elegant way with mercy that he strengthens us see inna khalaqna al insana min nutfatin amshajin nabtalihi fajalnahu sami'an basira 
this ability to hear, to see, Allah has given those abilities to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps telling us, you say that, أَدْعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنْ يَنْصُرُكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ When God helps you, no one will defeat you. Allah is telling me that, yes, as difficult as this world is, as short-term and short-lived as it is, it is nonetheless a mercy of Allah to be placed on this earth. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to use our rationality and reason to say that, are you enamored by the beauty of this world? And we say, yes, we love beautiful things. Who will deny beautiful things? People kill for beautiful things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you are a testament that you love beautiful things, and I am the beautiful one who created the beautiful things. Why would I put you in a world filled with misery and short-term pleasures? Unless this world is temporary as a trial, why would I create such a system? If we truly believe in the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we truly believe in the infinite mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then for sure this earth is not the end of it all. Impossible. It's illogical. Hence we know that this world is a temporary world. It's a world of trials and tribulations. And Allah doesn't keep it as a secret. He tells it to us very boldly in the Quran in many, many ways. You know, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ with fear, So if you examine Allah SWT, we will test you with fear, loss of lives, loss of your fruits, your family, you see, and while your material is going to go. Allah says this is a trial, but give the good news to the patient ones. Who are they that when this trial hits them, they say we are from Allah and we're returning to Allah. So this believer understands that this world is a world of sacrifices, that as much as we polish ourselves, we try to pursue the worldly affairs, we try to perfect ourselves, we try to reach higher standards of existence, but all with the clear understanding that this world is transient and that which awaits us is better. As Allah says, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ you love this world, but the hereafter is better for you and, and permanent. Abqa. So, through this understanding, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also telling me that we have prescribed fasting on you. Kutib alaykum Why is fasting prescribed? For this reason that mankind, you are under a trial. And if you don't strengthen your abilities to make valid choices, which implies taking things, but also implies rejecting things. Not just taking, but being able to say no to something which is harmful. That ability to say no is a very difficult thing. Many a times when something comes to us that's really attractive to us, that we want much of, it is very hard to say no to it. Historically, Muawiyah used to say, this, the Banu Hashim, have speak on the truth, but I have bought this religion, Islam. I have bought it. I have paid for it. I, I sold, you know, he's selling Allah for a, for a mean price. Whereas Allah says, Ahl al Bayt is a rijalun la tulhihim tijaratun wala bay'un an dhikrillah. They don't bargain for a mean price. The Ahl al Bayt, men, the prophets and the imma and their families who are representatives of Allah, they don't sell Islam for a mean price. لا تلهيهم تجارتهم ولا بيعون عن ذكر الله ويقام الصلاة ويتعز الزكاة يخافون يوما تتخلبوا Allah SWT is saying, look at them, they are afraid of that day because this world is a transient world. It's a world in which it's a world of trials and tribulations and therefore you have to be ready to accept it. Now you notice that my tone appears to be negative. Trials, tribulations, negative, negative. But I want us to understand it's not on the negative front that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the mercy of Allah. That when Allah puts us under this trial, when Allah says, that means He's telling me you are capable of handling it. You are strong. It's like a father says to the son, go out and be tested to the real world. You are ready. It's like somebody who was training and after the training, the master said, now go out and do it. Oh, I'm ready for this trial? Yes, you are prepared, go. 
that ability is a great honor. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave karama, gave honor to Bani Adam, that he made him use the, the universe to his benefit. أَلَمْ تَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ سَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا We have made it apparent for you that this is the universe is at your hand. Use it, whether it is hidden or uh, uh, apparent. But Allah says, this is a ni'mah, ni'amahu. Imagine ni'amahu, plural, it's jam. It's not even, it's not singular. A lot of uh, rahmah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I have honored you, I have strengthened you, but understand that through this trial, you will succeed. And really, honestly, brothers and sisters, we need to reiterate this among ourselves, that no human being has value unless they have been tested. Honestly, really, when something comes to you, you say, what is this? This is a very valuable thing. She says, well, let me test it. I have to examine it. I have to put it through some trials. If I don't, it's just a statement. You'll find the best friends are the ones who have been together through the test of time. And time is a sealer of trials. It puts you in a, in a, in a pathway by which time cannot go, we cannot go backwards in time. And if a person is able to remain in a particular pathway, and they are reliable as a friend within these trials and tribulations and the vicissitudes of time as we call it, the ups and downs, the unknowns, that today there's good news, tomorrow there's bad news. Is my friend next to me supporting me in the bad times and in good times? Were they charitable in, good, in bad times, for example? In good times it's easy, necessarily, though charity is still uh, a great deed, but how about when in bad times, were you charitable? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were charitable in good times and in bad times. Time is that sealer that shows you proof and evidence that this is a good friend, because I have a history with this person. I have a lot of time with this person. It's a trial. If it's not for trials, we, we cannot put value. There is no value system without a trial. No one can place a value on something unless it has been thoroughly tested. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your value is in your own test. For your own selves. For you to understand that when you existed from non-existence, that was enough value, no matter how you see it. But how will you understand Allah says? Hmm? Therefore Allah gives me senses and says, go. And study and understand and, un and question the integrity of life. And understand how much value I have conferred on you. When you understand it and you will submit to me on that basis, that's the highest value. To recognize Allah. Many of us I see when I work with children, I ask them this question. Why do you pray? They said, oh, if I don't pray, I'll go to hell. Why do you pray? Oh, I want to go to paradise. It's always material or the lack thereof. <clears throat> it's a very low level belief system. But Allah also speaks about it. Inna ladina amanu amilu salihati lahum jannatun na'im. Khalidina fiha wa'adallahi haq. Those who believe in Allah and do good deeds for them is paradise. So Allah is telling me about paradise. But is that the real operative reason for us to worship Allah? Or the, or the fact that we fast and we pray because we are afraid of being punished? As Imam Ali elegantly says, Oh Allah, I don't worship you for these reasons.